What's up guys, Andrew here. Today I have my full review on the all new HP Envy M7. This is a 17.3 inch multimedia laptop that features some pretty good specs for the price. You get a Broadwell dual core i7, an Nvidia 840M with 2GB of DDR3, 12GB of RAM, a 1TB hard drive running at 5400 RPM, all for an attractive price of under $1000. Let's see if this laptop is worth picking up. I'm going to kick off this review by talking about the design and build quality. The design is pretty similar to most other NV laptops and that's a good thing. The exterior has a nice natural silver plastic finish that also does a great job of keeping fingerprints away. The interior has a painted metal finish on the palm rest that adds a nice cool touch to the overall design. The top section of the interior is your Beats audio speakers and last but not least is your HP Control Zone trackpad. Overall this 17.3 inch NV laptop is well built all around. The weight comes in at 7.07 pounds and its thickest point is 1.22 inches. In my opinion, that's pretty acceptable for a full size 17 inch laptop. For your ports on the left side, you have your AC charging port, Kensington lock, Ethernet, exhaust port, HDMI, two USB 3s, and an SD card reader. And the good news about this SD card reader is the SD card is almost flush mount with this notebook. On the right side, you got your power status and hard disk LED indicator lights, followed by your headset microphone jack combo, an additional USB 3, and a DVD drive, which is very rare nowadays. Next up is display performance. This is rocking a 1920 by 1080p LG Philips TN panel, and it looks gorgeous. Yes, I know most TN panels on the market are pretty bad, but this one is beautiful. The sRGB coverage came in at a whopping 99%, and the Adobe RGB came in at 78%. These scores are right up there with the Dell XPS 13, HP Spectre X360, and the Samsung Ative Book 9. Viewing angles were pretty adequate for a TN panel. I was expecting the worst, but I was actually quite surprised at the viewing angles on this notebook. Since this is a glossy panel, you're going to get a lot of reflections by windows and bright lighting, so keep that in mind. Another nice bonus with this 17 inch panel is the fact that it's a touchscreen. The response has been smooth and accurate. For Windows 8.1 laptops, I think having a touchscreen makes it more of an experience. Keyboard performance was okay. I just wish there was a little more key travel, especially for a laptop this size. With that being said, the tactile feedback was adequate, and the nice bonus is the 10 key numeric keypad. But keep in mind, the number lock key does not have a status LED indicator. Just give this keyboard some time, and you'll get adapted to it. A nice key feature on this laptop is the backlit keyboard. However, for future generations, I would like to see multiple brightness options. Moving along to trackpad, the M7 features a HP Control Zone trackpad that is the size of an iPhone 6. It does a great job of tracking, two finger scrolling was very smooth, and multi-touch gestures were pretty responsive. For those of you that don't know, the HP Control Zone trackpad can give you quick access to the charms menu and multitasking tray, but for some reason, my multitasking control zone was not working. CPU performance is coming from a dual core Broadwell i7-5500U clocked at 2.4 GHz with turbo up to 3 GHz. Performance is pretty solid for normal productivity and even some light duty gaming. Now some of you guys like to run some demanding software and this dual core may not cut it. So if that's the case, I would take a look at some other 17 inch laptops like the Toshiba ones. That one usually comes with a dedicated GPU and a quad core i7. And here's the benchmarks for the Broadwell i7. For the single core score, I got 2,967. And for the multi-core performance, I got 6,112. And our last benchmark here is Cinebench R15. For the CPU score, I got 294 CB. So how are the CPU temps after light to medium duty workloads? Well, the average is around 46 degrees Celsius, and the max came in at around 57 degrees Celsius. These are some very good CPU thermal temps. In addition to the integrated Intel HD 5500, you're also getting a dedicated GPU. And this is the Nvidia 840M, which is an entry level card that offers adequate performance for many of today's games on low settings. The major downfall of this card is the DDR3 video memory and the 64 bit memory interface. Like I said, you can run many of today's games on low to medium settings, but its performance will be quickly reached due to the fact of its memory interface and overall speed. So how does the 840M perform? Well I tested out GTA 5 and it will not be playable on this laptop. Yes, I even tried it on low settings at 1366 by 768 and I was still not able to get over 30 frames per second. 
However, games like CSGO and League of Legends ran smooth like butter at 1080p on very high settings. During 30 minutes of CSGO, the highest GPU temperature was around 67 degrees Celsius and the average CPU temp was 68 degrees Celsius with a high of up to 80 degrees Celsius. At the end of the day, the HP Envy M7 ran pretty cool and efficient. Fan noise levels were pretty good overall. During light usage, you can hardly hear the fan. If anything, you can hear the 5400 RPM hard drive more than the fan. But under heavy usage, the fans will cook up to about 54 decibels. Battery life is going to be the shortest coming for this notebook. Power is coming from a 4-cell 41 watt hour battery pack, which is very small for a laptop this size. On average, I've been able to get around 3 to 3.5 hours out of a full charge with screen brightness set at around 50%. The good news here is the battery pack is replaceable on the go, so if you plan on taking this huge laptop on the road, be sure to get that extra battery pack. The NVM7 is powered by Beats Audio speakers and they actually sound pretty good. They are loud and they offer decent sound. The mids and highs are well balanced and the overall sound quality is acceptable. And here's a quick sound test in action. Hey, what's up guys? Andrew here, testing out the webcam on the new HP Envy M7. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. In terms of upgrades, HP did not make it easy to get into this laptop. You'll have to remove all the bottom 13 Phillips screws, plus the two by the battery, and then pry up gently. I would be extremely careful because those plastic pins can break very easily. The main component you'll want to upgrade is the 5400 RPM hard drive. It can be slow at times, and it's the main bottleneck of this laptop. I was getting it around 104 megabytes a second on the read speed and 92 megabytes a second on the write speeds. For the RAM, you have 12 gigabytes, which is more than adequate for many users today. I believe there's 4 gigabytes soldered on board and there's one DIMM slot with 8 gigabytes. For your Wi Fi performance, you're getting an Intel dual band wireless AC3160, which offers great solid performance. You also have Bluetooth 4.0 enabled. I have tested this wireless card's performance on CSGO Online and the performance has been great. So let's get to the conclusion of this laptop. The HP M7 offers great performance for the money. You get a beautiful 17.3 inch touchscreen panel, a quick and efficient dual core Broadwell i7, a dedicated Nvidia 840M that can play many of today's games on low to medium settings, all for under $1,000. I think this is probably the best bang for your buck in terms of full size 17 inch laptops. I would even choose this laptop over the Dell Inspiron 17 7000 that I recently reviewed. Like I said earlier, if you plan on running heavy 3D programs and more intense CPU programs, then you'll want to take a look at some of the other 17-inch laptops that feature a dedicated GPU and a quad-core i7. With that being said, for the average consumer out there, I highly recommend this HP Envy M7 for someone that wants a full-size 17-inch laptop that offers a great bang for your buck. The cons were the short battery life, but let's be real here, this laptop is most likely going to spend most of its day in the office or at home. The second minor complaint I have is the short key travel on the keyboard, but give it some time and you'll get adjusted to this keyboard just fine. Alright guys, this completes my full review on the all new HP Envy M7. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys for the support and I'll catch you in the next one.